My hair is resurrected. I finally got a haircut. Huh? <laughs> Ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome to another Mark Ashton video. It's time to talk about beautiful Palestine. First, let me give a shout out to our sponsor, Wondershare Uni Converter. For anyone looking to convert high quality videos and audio files, this is the best converter for it. You can convert full HD and even 4K resolution, any video and audio format with up to 30 times faster conversion speed. Download any videos, burn or rip old CDs and DVDs. You also have a screen recorder function, which I really like, so you can record the streaming videos if you want. This is also perfect for screenshots or for recording high quality gaming videos with real time voiceover. The app even includes great editing functions. Aside from that, you also have the option to make GIFs and VR video conversion. Very professional and easy to use. They also have great customer service too, with one-on-one -on -one support. I put the links below, guys. Wondershare Uni Converter. You get a free trial, and then you get 40% off the full version. All right now, Palestine. Here we go. Palestine is a country in the Middle East with a population of about 5 million people, with different official borders depending on where you are in history. Currently recognized by the UN, or specifically 138 countries in the UN, but not all with Arabic as its official language and Palestinian Arabic being the dialect. It's currently holding the West Bank and Gaza Strip with Jerusalem as its designated capital, but Ramallah as its government center. Now Jerusalem, or Yehushalayim in Hebrew or Quds in Arabic, which of course is holy to Islam, Christianity and Judaism, is one of the oldest cities in the world, currently with under a million people. The old city of Jerusalem is named a World Heritage Site, with early settlements going back 6,000 years in the city of David, or Wadi Halwe. The name is suggested to come from the ancient Semitic Ur, meaning city, and Shalem, the Canaanite mythical deity, around 3,500 years ago. It's where King David established the capital of his kingdom, King Solomon built the first temple, where Jesus preached and was crucified, where Prophet Muhammad made his two-part night journey, al Isra wal Ma'raj. Peace be upon them all, and all of you. Moving on. Temple Mount with the Western Wall, Har Habayit in Hebrew, or Haram al-Sharif in Arabic. The Islamic shrine of the Dome of the Rock in Arabic, Qubbat al-Sakhra, built in the late 7th century. Right next to it, you have the Dome of the Chain, or Qubbat al-Silsila. Al-Aqsa Mosque, or Al-Masjid al-Aqsa, where the Prophet was transported from the Great Mosque of Mecca to Al-Aqsa during his night journey, as I mentioned earlier. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre, located in the Christian quarter of the Old City, the site where Jesus was crucified, as well as his empty tomb. The Garden Tomb is also suggested to be the burial place of Jesus. Alright, now the climate of Palestine is varied. Partly Mediterranean, partly arid with the Judean Desert. Now let's look at some old history. Palestine is part of a region which includes some of the oldest civilizations, the Levant, and that's after prehistoric presence in the area. Around 10,000 to 5,000 BC, we discover evidence of early communities with settlements like a dwelling in Tel Sultan in the city of Jericho, aka Ariha. Tel Sultan is a UNESCO heritage site, also known as ancient Jericho, considered the oldest town on earth. Archaeological excavations in the mid 20th century showed 23 layers of ancient civilizations at the site. The earliest remains date back to the 10th to 8th millennium BC, like this plaster skull and the Tower of Jericho. The region then developed into ancient Canaanite city states as Philistia, the name which was given by Greek writers referring to the land of the Philistines during the 12th century BC. Eventually, they were taken over by ancient Egypt during the New Kingdom before going to the Israelites around 1000 BC, the period where kings David and Solomon ruled, until the Neo-Assyrian Empire took over and then the Neo-Babylonian Empire, during which, according to the Bible, Jerusalem was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar II, one of the many times Jerusalem has been sacked and destroyed throughout history. Persians then took over during the Achaemenid Empire until the Greeks conquered it. Then comes Rome, during which Jesus Christ appears. About 100 years later, specifically 135 AD, Syria Palestina is established as a Roman province until 390, which was a fusion of Roman Judea and Roman Syria, and eventually it was called Palestina. During that period, Jerusalem was called Aelia Capitolina, 
following the destruction of the city in 70 AD. After briefly following under the Palmyrene Empire, the region went through civil wars, which brought Emperor Constantine into victory around the 4th century, and he proceeded to Christianize the Roman Empire. Palestine then experienced a new era of prosperity and became a center of Christianity. It's during that period that the Church of the Holy Sepulchre was built in Jerusalem. At the end of the century, an enlarged Palestine was split into three provinces, Palestina Prima, Secunda, and Tertia, first, second, and third. And Palestine enjoyed general tranquility until the 7th century when Persians invaded the region and the Byzantine territory, capturing Jerusalem, destroying churches, and even carrying off the true cross, said to be the cross Jesus was crucified on apparently found by Constantine's mother, St. Helena. The cross was then recovered along with Palestine by Byzantine Emperor Heraclius in 628 until Muslim Arab armies arrived, taking over the Middle East, including the Levant or Bilad Shem, a part of which was Jund Philistine. Several centuries later, and we enter the Crusade period, during which the region is captured by Crusaders and turned into the Kingdom of Jerusalem, before Salah ad-Din takes it back. Mongols then reach Palestine briefly until Ottomans take over in 1516 and rule the region for centuries, until World War I, which leads us to 20th century history. Now, during World War I, the British Empire was assisted by Arabs in driving out the Ottomans out of the Levant. In exchange, the British agreed to give Arabs independence with the McMath Hussein correspondence, but then they reworded their promises to explain that it would remain under British mandate until deemed capable of self-governance, which is the period of mandatory Palestine. And then things got complicated with the Sykes-Picot Agreement, which was a secret agreement meant to keep parts of the territories under control of the British and French. You sneaky little. And then more complications with the Treaty of Belfort, agreeing to grant, quote, a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine. And then even more complications with the 1947 UN Partition Plan, which of course began decades of conflicts, wars, and refugee crises. All the way to today. Basically, the problem is, and always has been, European imperialism and colonialism. The roots of so many problems today. And you can see how division is always a cause of conflict. As for refugees, it's estimated that there are around 5 million registered Palestinian refugees, according to the UNRWA, with many in Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. Palestine, nonetheless, does have a declaration of independence proclaimed on November 15, 1988, was admitted as a member state by UNESCO in 2011, and as an observer state in 2012 to the UN General Assembly. Palestine is also a member of the Arab League, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, the G77, and the International Olympic Committee. Okay, now let's go to notable cities I didn't mention. Gaza, or Gaza, largest city in Palestine, where you can find great landmarks like the Great Mosque of Gaza, or Jame Gaza al-Kabir, as well as the Sayyid Hashim Mosque, Masjid Sayyid Hashim, built in honor of Prophet Muhammad's great-grandfather Hashim whose mausoleum is located in the northwestern corner of the mosque. Other mosques include the Katib al-Wilaya Mosque, which goes back to 1334, the Ibn Uthman Mosque, and the Ibn Marwan Mosque. You'll also find the Unknown Soldier Square, dedicated to an unknown Palestinian fighter, and the Qasr al-Basha, originally a palace, now a school and museum. Then we have the city of Neblis, originally a Roman city under the name Flavia Neapolis. Today known for its sweets, traditional olive oil soap, and busy markets. Nablus is also home to much of Palestine's industry and commerce. Among the main attractions in Nablus are Jacob's Well and the old city of Nablus, as well as the village of Sebastia where you can find the Nabi Yahya Mosque, which contains the tomb of John the Baptist, Elisha, and Obadiah. Janin, where the martyr Dr. Khalil Suleiman Hospital was found. The Fatima Khatun Mosque, as well as the Canaan Fairtrade, a supplier of olive oil. Founded by Palestinian-American businessman Nasser Abu Farha, who also established the Palestinian Fair Trade Association, developing an internationally recognized fair trade standard for olive oil, Ramallah, currently serving as a de facto government center. Considered the most liberal city with a large minority of Arab Christians living with the Muslim majority. 
you will also find a Starbucks there. Che Che Cafe also, and the Orjuan Lounge. There's also the El Qasba Theater there. The only professional, fully equipped, multi-purpose cinema in Palestine. As well as the Yasser Arafat Square. Hebron or Khalil, where you'll find the Judean Mountains as well as the Old Town, named a World Heritage Site. The city is venerated by all three religions as the burial site of the patriarchs and matriarchs, located in the cave of the patriarchs. Abraham is said to have bought the land as a burial place. Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, and Leah are buried there. Bethlehem on the West Bank. Beit Lahem in Arabic, Beit Lahem in Hebrew. Very touristy during Christmas because of the location of the Church of the Nativity, birthplace of Jesus. There's also Rachel's tomb there, the burial place of the Holy Matriarch, which is an important Jewish holy site, but just as important to Christians and Muslims, of course. You'll also find the Palestinian Heritage Site in Bethlehem, dedicated to promote, revive, and preserve Palestinian culture heritage. Important sites include the Jordan River, Nahr al-Urdun in Arabic, Nahar Hayagdin in Hebrew. The World Heritage Site called Land of Olives and Vines in Batir. Mount Gerizim, one of the highest peaks in the West Bank at 881 meters above sea level. Jabal Aybal at 940 meters. The Qumran Caves and the Monastery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. Okay, now let's mention a few notable artists. Like the classic Mahmoud Darwish, Palestinian poet and author who was regarded as the Palestinian national poet and the most recognized Palestinian poet in the world. His poetry has been translated into more than 20 languages, and he won many international prizes for his work. Edward Said, who was a professor of literature at Columbia University and the founder of post-colonial studies, who wrote his best-known work, Orientalism, one of the most influential scholarly books of the 20th century, which portrays how Western societies created images and media of the East as the other and something of a fetish and fantasy usually as an inferior world. And obviously that stuff is very relevant today. In our generation, you have Le Trio Gibran, who I happen to love, a group of three Palestinian brothers who play traditional Oud music, Samir, Wissam, and Adnan Gibran. Their music is just fantastic. <laughs> Muhammad Asef, the Palestinian pop singer who was the winner of the second season of Arab Idol, who became a goodwill ambassador for peace by the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees, while Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas offered him a position of diplomatic standing. He had a film made about his life called The Idol, about a wedding singer from a refugee camp who won the 2013 Arab Idol and has become a Palestinian hero as described by his fans. A few famous people of Palestinian descent include DJ Khalid, DJ Hadid, and Queen Rania of Jordan, who is also of Palestinian descent. And now, on to food. Palestinian food, of course, shares similarities with Levantine foods like in Lebanon and Syria, hummus, falafel, makdous, the knefe dessert. Otherwise, you have msakhan, consisting of roasted chicken and caramelized onions that are garnished with pine nuts and arranged on top of taboon bread that's previously been dipped in olive oil. I know you want to try that now. Ma'luba, the national dish of Palestine, made with rice, vegetables, usually carrots, potatoes, tomatoes, cauliflower, and onions, herbs and spices like turmeric and cement, and of course, meat. All layered, boiled, and then flipped upside down. Rain rice, a traditional rice dish made with a simple combination of jasmine rice, raisins, and cinnamon. Beautiful, delicious. Rukab's ice cream in Ramallah, the delicious ice cream shop known for its stretchy ice cream that I'm currently craving right now. Stretchy ice cream can also be found in other countries. It's flavory and it stretches as if it's mozzarella ice cream. I want booza. Knefe Nablesiyi, the delicious dessert specifically from the city of Nablus, which is an amazing cake made with crispy brown shredded semolina filled with stretchy cheese, originally Nablus cheese, all bathing in sugar syrup. Oh yeah. All right, that was some Palestine facts. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and share so people around the world can see why Palestine 
is so great. Leave a comment and subscribe for more. Check out my Patreon too if you want to support my work. Sending love to all Palestinians. May you achieve worldwide official recognition as well as peace. Inshallah, I'll see you in all the countries and live in peace. And now I want to take a moment of silence. I'd like to take a moment. Of course, those of you who know me know that I believe in peace. I believe in making your voice heard peacefully. And of course, I believe it's necessary to speak up when human rights are violated. So I'd like to take a moment of silence for Yad al the autistic Palestinian man who was shot and killed on his way to his special needs school. Let's just take a moment. With everything happening in the world, it's an opportunity to wake up peacefully, as I said. It's an opportunity for real change, away from divisiveness, barriers, fear, hate, violence, injustice. I think now is the time. Thanks for watching and take care. Alamakum. Thank mm -hmm. you.